the last time we featured the Realme GT Neo 2 on this channel, I said that it's the best model among the GT series this year. But after making it my main phone for an extended period, has my opinion changed? Spoiler alert, not that much. It's still my favorite GT phone to recommend to most people, even when the original Realme GT has me spoiled with its compact form factor. But if it's the reliability you're looking for in a mobile device, this one delivers on all fronts. To all the followers, welcome back and thanks for stopping by once again. And if you're new here, we make tech videos of all kinds, so feel free to drop a sub to get notified of new content. Before I started using the GT Neo 2, take note that I came from the Realme GT, the Xiaomi 11T 5G, and the Poco F3. I've spent most of 2021 using these devices, so at this point, I've grown accustomed to each of them and how they perform in the real world. With that said, let's start with the design. The GT Neo 2 here is the blue color that actually looks like other Oppo phones, which isn't surprising if you know the history of Oppo and Realme. The way the back matte finish shimmers is actually paler than in photos. Realme calls this Neo Blue, but I think it's more like a cloud blue personally speaking. I've yet to see minor or major scratches in the back, the same applies to the plastic frame. However, this is me using the phone with extra care. You know, having a dedicated place in my pocket and not mixing it with other things like keys or coins. But if you need to be extra careful, the included case in the box is actually thick and sturdy for a free case. It's not ultra soft, but it's not also ultra stiff. It's just right in between. Do take note that it makes the phone a bit bulky and a bit unwieldy with one hand. But without a case, it's manageable. The in-screen fingerprint scanner, which is as inaccurate for 9 out of 10 times, is easily reachable and comfortable to use. It's that reaching the top half of the screen that may require some hand gymnastics, but overall the form factor is a good balance between having a solid filling phone with a big enough screen to inject content consumption while not throwing away ergonomics out of the window. If there's one thing I'm missing from this phone, it's the headphone jack. I still use wired headphones from time to time and using a cheap USB-C adapter doesn't do justice when it comes to quality. When it comes to the display, the quality can go head to head with the Poco F3, Xiaomi 11T while being miles better than the Realme GT. It's fast thanks to 120Hz refresh and bright enough to be comfortably used outdoors. Jason Marina's testing claims up to 659 nits in auto mode while up to 498 nits in manual mode. I personally think the manual mode is brighter than 500 nits, and although there's no dedicated outdoor mode in the display setting, the feature kicks in as soon as it senses the direct sunlight. The bezel on the chin is slightly thicker than the top bezel, but they're so close to symmetry at times. In the display setting, you can choose from the three preset qualities. I had it set to vivid to get punchy colors without going overboard. You still get a couple of enhancer settings through 01 Ultra Vision Engine, but I still don't notice any difference when turned on. The only setting I turned on for the display is a bright HDR video mode. Despite the warning of high battery consumption, the difference is negligible in my experience. And as always, my refresh rate is always set to high or 120Hz all the time. Since we're talking about power consumption, let's get the battery out of the way. It's just great. I usually start using my phone at 9am and end the day near midnight. When connected to Wi-Fi all day, along with Bluetooth and GPS, I would usually end the night with more than 30% battery left for the next morning. Considering I've had 5 hours of screen usage already, that's pretty impressive. On mobile data connection, I typically have to charge at the end of the day, but even when you leave mobile data on standby, it doesn't drain the battery like an overflowing water dam. As for the 65 watts charging, it remains a reliable feature for me, especially when I have to leave the house at short notice. The speakers, they sound loud and good. I don't have any complaints here. I think the overall quality sits between the 11T and the F3, with the 11T taking first place. As for the camera quality, despite Realme marketing this device as a gaming phone, both the back and front cameras have been nothing but a reliable companion for me whether I need to take a photo or video. In fact, I'll even go as far as putting these cameras over the 108 megapixel sensor of the 11T. They are that good. I would even say that I'm comfortable using these cameras over my oldie but goody Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Although the 4K video still looks a bit soft for my taste, 
It's not that bad for the asking price of the GT Neo 2. Among the plethora of camera modes baked into this phone, Night Mode and AI Mode are the two most important features for me. Night Mode continues to do a good job in exposing the details and highlights, while AI Mode, despite the 1080p resolution, makes the videos appear bright and appealing, something I don't mind posting on my social media channels. But if there's one thing I wish Realme starts fixing, it's the sensitive exposure changing of the cameras. You get these weird pulsating exposure levels during video that gets a bit annoying sometimes. Overall, I love the cameras on the GT Neo 2. If you're looking for a Snapdragon 870 device with reliable and dependable cameras, the GT Neo 2 will not disappoint you. Last but definitely not least is the software. The GT Neo 2 is still running on Realme UI 2.0 but it's slated to receive the 3.0 version that's based on Android 12 somewhere around the second quarter of 2022. The company has opened beta testing last December, but given their track record, they usually take at least 2-3 to three months before they release the global stable version. I do have to say that the UI I'm running on right now is still fine. It needs a bit of optimization as some animations within the UI drop frames from time to time, but hopefully this gets fixed on the next update. One quirk I noticed is that the GT Neo 2 starts to receive late notifications once the battery hits around the low 30s of the battery percentage. This has been a consistent occurrence for me and honestly speaking, it gets quite annoying. I didn't have this issue with the Realme GT so it's weird to see that it's happening here. Other than frame drops and late notifications, I think Realme UI is still one of my favorite Android skins today. They may just be a fork of color OS from Oppo but it's not a bad fork to use. Now, if there's a reason for you to not buy the GT Neo 2, it's probably the inevitable release of the Realme GT2 series. The GT2 Pro is going to be the first true flagship phone from the company, featuring the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, dual 50 megapixel sensors, and an LTPO display. However, the cost around could be $800. As for the GT2, based on the rumors, the specs are like a bumped up version of the GT Neo 2 featuring Snapdragon 888 and a 15MP main sensor. I'm not sure of the official price yet, but if I have to guess, I think it's going to be a bit more expensive than the GT Neo 2. And currently, the GT Neo 2 costs between $390 and $449. But if you use our promo code, which you can use in the description box below, you will get a $20 discount. And at discounted prices, the GT Neo 2 is easily recommendable to anyone looking for a reliable all-around phone that can last for a few years. That's it for this one. Drop a sub or like if you feel supporting the channel. And until the next one, stay safe.